Hi again, and welcome to my monthly message. Um, this month is for October 2021, and I hope I hope you're all doing well, and hope you're you're able to um, continue to forge ahead with your life in spite of all all the changes that are happening in the world at the moment, especially again to do with the coronavirus. And uh, as we've mentioned many times, the most important thing is that we keep connected, and you know, taking the initiative to keep connections with each other at this time is is ever more important actually, and it's, and it's ever more powerful considering the circumstances that we're in. And on that note, I also wanted to um, talk about, you know, this opportunity we have to connect together through reading Indigo every month, our monthly magazine. So, you know, a lot of effort goes into preparing these articles. And, um, you know, although physically, of course, we can't all meet up with each other every month, right? But we can connect to each other through through Indigo, through sharing this together. You know, con uh, connecting in our hearts together to President Akita's guidance, and uh, and these you know wonderful experiences of human revolution that we share from our membership, and a number of the art other other articles um, sharing our thoughts and what's happening in the organisation. So, it's a it's a concrete way that we can actually keep connected, and we can keep unified together in direction. Um, for our practice, but also for our lives. So I do really warmly encourage you to, to take the initiative to subscribe to Indigo if, you, if you're not already and continue to subscribe if you are. Subscribe if you are. Um, a little while back, we introduced a six month subscription, which um, hopefully makes it easy for some people just you know in terms of how much cash they can lay out at, at one time to subscribe to the magazine. But I really hope you can and we can share, share these great, great words together with everyone. So this month's article I'll um, focus on again for October to go, and this, this article is called Treasuring Each Person, that's the title. So I'll read from the article, it says, in a recently published study lecture, President Ikeda wrote, the Soka Gakkai has forged a vast grassroots network encompassing 192 countries and territories and developed into a global religious movement. This is of course due to the greatness of Nichiren, Dai, Nichiren Buddhism and the powerful Bennett of the Gohonzon. But it is also because we treasure each person. Instead of thinking of humanity in the abstract, we actively reach out to and encourage real individuals who are suffering or struggling. Some of them go on to join us in chanting Nam Hyo and taking action for the happiness of someone else in their lives. Our worldwide network of Bodhisattvas of the Earth was built through such earnest, consistent one-to-one -one encouragement." End quote. Um, and the article says, this is a very clear and inspiring perspective to direct our efforts to, to connect people in our lives to the humanistic realm of Buddhism. It's something important to remind ourselves of as we engage in the reality of sharing our practice in dialogue with those around us. So yeah, I do think this is uh, in, an incredibly important direction and uh, spirit of our movement that President Akita has outlined here. This, this thinking or this, this attitude that we try not to think of groups of people as just a mass of humanity um, or a group, you know, a group and, and we, we label them in a certain way is, is crucial for the happiness and peace of our world actually. So this happens at an individual level, um, at a community level, at a, at a societal level, at, at a country level. Um, unfortunately, the human tendency is that we tend to look at a certain group of people as a whole and we make judgments based on that, you know, and um, we hear it all the time, right? So that, and, uh, and we hear it within our own hearts, right? If we would be honest, that, uh, you know, this type of people are like this and this type of people are like that. And the reality is when we actually take the time to talk and have dialogue with someone individually, we realize actually we're all the same and we're all human beings, you know, struggling with the same human issues, but also, you know, celebrating the same um, wonderful characteristics of humanity, the same potential within all of us. So this is really crucial um, f for us in our development but all, and our organization, but also for humanity as a whole, that we, don't allow ourselves to you know, gravitate into this way of thinking of, of humanity as a mass or as, 
or as President Kaya said, humanity in the abstract, instead of actually realizing that it's individuals and we're individuals too. And uh, when we can respect that and take action based on that, we can, we can, we can shift the, the culture of the, of the environment and society that we're living in. So the next part of the article says, for various reasons, many of us may hesitate or feel uncomfortable to openly share our connection to Buddhism with others. We may be afraid of being judged um, for being different or being associated with the negative views held in our societies around propagating religion. That's true, huh? Or we may become fixated on having to see an outcome that the person we, we share with must decide to take up the practice. Right? So whatever the reason, o overcoming our hesitation and fears to care for the person in front of us and naturally share how Buddhism has benefited our, benefited our lives is vital to the expansion of our own inner life and for contributing to the broader vision of humanity's happiness. So much so that President Ikeda offers the following guidance, quote, he said, spreading the, teachings, spreading the teachings encompasses all forms of practice in Buddhism. There is no better way to forge character. If we neglect this basic practice of sharing the teachings, we can, cannot cultivate ourselves as human beings. So it's very, very powerful guidance. Sir. So this is reality eh, for us. We, for whatever reasons, and you know, we need to reflect on ourselves. We may hesitate to share with others that we practice Buddhism, and this this is what it means to our life. And um, as I pointed out here, it could be because, especially in um, Australian society, you know, religion is generally a very sensitive topic and a very private topic. Um, so that may affect uh, our confidence in just sharing openly. But you know. In reality, we're not trying to share about religion as such, are we? We're trying to share about how we can actually transform our lives, how we can live a much more happier life, uh, a more harmonious life with others, how we can develop and expand our life. So it's, it's this sort of um, message and this sort of encouragement we want to be able to get across to, to the other people in our lives, isn't it? So, I think sometimes the thought of religion can sort of block us from feeling confident about sharing. But we, we need to be sensitive that in, in, this, in this society in particular, uh, religion generally is a, quite a sensitive topic. So we need to use our wisdom about when we, um, when we, when we share with other people and, in what's, you know, and, uh, and the timing of that as well too, and the circumstances. Okay, so the next part of the article says... When we, when we reflect on and acknowledge how our life has changed through practicing the Daishana's Buddhism, we naturally feel a desire for others to also experience such inner transformation. We can then use our wisdom to recognize the appropriate time to share our experience of Buddhist practice with them without an expectation that they must decide to take up the practice there and then. What matters is how much we sincerely care for the happiness of others. Whether they are immediately interested to know more about the practice or not, our heartfelt friendship will enable the lifeblood of Buddhist humanism to continue to flow between our lives. Ultimately, our efforts are based on respecting the life of another person, not about being righteous regarding our practice of Buddhism. So, yeah, I think this is, for me, this is a very important point and a very important aspect as well, too. We're not trying to convert people. Like, uh, it's not a dogmatic approach to sharing with people that no you must become a buddhist and and uh you know because i say so you, you should you should therefore take up this practice you know we're not trying to um you know tick off the number of people who are able to you know convert to the practice as some sort of uh, badge of honor it's it has to be based on our genuine care and concern for another person and respect for their life because Everybody's circumstances are different, as we know, right? And everybody's state of life is different at different times throughout their life. And we really need to respect that. So even though we may feel, you know, quite honestly, that this person really needs to practice Buddhism to change their life, they're stuck in this situation, um, we can't control that. It's actually up to them. You know, what we can do is honestly share our own, our own experience of Buddhism and you know, and encourage them. But really it's up to them at that time, are they ready to actually make that commitment? And, and, and are they really, really 
to take a to shift their life at that deep level and it's, it can be a quite a, a daunting prospect for people so you know we, we really need to respect another person's life and the state state of their life and from that perspective and we should never allow you know our discussion about buddhism to affect the fr our, the friendship that we have with other people you know there, there's something really wrong when, when that happens we, we've, we've got our you know we've got the idea mixed up a bit wrong so whatever the situation we maintain a friendship, a respect for another person's life. Um, but, you know, once we share um, what I try to talk about in this passage, is that once we do share, you know, f about Buddhism, how it's affected our lives, what sort of insight it's had into our life, it enables us to then engage in further, you know, conversations at a humanistic level, you know, especially from the viewpoint of Buddhism about life. So it's really, really important to open up that uh, opportunity. If that makes sense. Thank you. Um, so, next part says, in, in connecting others to Buddhism, we are planting a seed in their hearts. And we cannot tell when this seed may develop into a desire for them to transform their lives through Buddhism. Also, it is difficult to know when someone in our lives is ready to change the course of their life. If we neglect to share our practice, they will not have the opportunity to connect to Buddhism at these critical times. So I think, similar to what I was just saying, that... Um, you know, we never know when it's the right time for someone to actually want to commit to transforming their lives. Um, and, you know, that when we, when we share about Buddhism, that, can, that may just be the right time for them to decide that they want to shift their life and transform their life. And we're enabling this opportunity through sharing, sharing um, the perspective of Buddhism with them. But it doesn't mean that always happens, right? So... If we have expectation about someone else is going to practice just because I say it's really good, then uh, we're really creating a lot of issues actually for ourselves and for our relationship with the other people. You know, so, but the reality is, unless we actually grab the opportunity and take the opportunity to share with others, then that, opp that, um, that opportunity for the other person will never come along. They'll never be able to decide that this is the time I want to change and they're able to then connect to Buddhism through, through, our, through our sharing. So it's quite, it's quite crucial. Eh? And, and the last passage I say, like, nevertheless, we often do need to challenge ourselves to share that we practice Buddhism with someone when an opportunity arises. Overcoming our fears or self-consciousness to focus on the other person's happiness at these times is a significant cause for our own human revolution and ultimately for the happiness and peace of humankind. So that's the great challenge, eh? that we need to take these opportunities to share. So, you know, something that's very common, I think, and I uh, experience myself and I hear from many members is, you know, we have these opportunities when, you know, we may have been um, attending some activities on a weekend or say we've, say we've attended a training course, like a general members training course. And, you know, when, when we turn up for work or some other social environment on the Monday morning. Of course, people ask, you know, what did you do on the weekend? So, so these, are, these are the opportunities that don't really, when we reflect, um, do I share about that I went to a Buddhist training course or do I just say I caught up with friends or something? So, you know, we have these opportunities and of course we need to be mindful of the situation. Um, whether we're talking to a group of people, it may not be appropriate at that time to share. We have to use our wisdom or, or just with an individual, it may be more, more appropriate at that time. But these are the question marks that go through our mind, don't they? When someone says, what did you do on the weekend? And, um, you know, do we have the confidence to just naturally share that, yeah, I attended this Buddhist training course and this is what it did for me? Without any expectation that, you know, the other person is going to say, oh, I want to join, <laughs> you know. But, but, you know, they may at that time. But uh, this, is, this is a really great opportunity for us to reflect, isn't it? So, I mean, I've, like anyone else, I've had those experiences as well too. And... I remember going back a few years now, but I, I came into work on a Monday morning after being away, uh, traveling for a week in interstate, uh, visiting, visiting members and talking to members. And um, I was going in between meetings and the uh, person who I was working with said, you know, oh, what did you do on the weekend? And I said, oh, I was, um, I was away interstate uh, with a Buddhist group and I was talking to members, trying to, trying to encourage them as best as I can. And at that time, you know, that person, it was the right time for this person. 
And they did say, oh, I want to know more about that. And so, you know, throughout the day, in the next couple of days, I shared more and more. And now that person's, you know, a practicing member, running a group, etc. But if I hadn't, if I hadn't challenged myself to share at that time, then, you know, most likely that never would have happened for this, for this person. And I can see that they've been able to dramatically transform their life, dramatically shift their life because of this practice. And I think, again, if I hadn't said anything, would, would, have, would, have, that, would have that ever happened? You know? So again, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I think this is a really important part of our practice. Uh, and like Sensei said, a crucial part of our practice. That sharing, naturally sharing uh, Buddhism with others and engaging in, in uh, humanistic dialogue, as, as President Nikita says, it brings together all aspects of our practice. That, that's how important it is. So yeah, please just be confident and just naturally share without any great expectation of the other person or of yourself. And please take care and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.